All right, kids, today we have guest reader, Miss Fadness, who teaches social studies in the middle school. And she is going to read Players in Pigtails. It's all yours. All right, Players in Pigtails. Katie Casey wasn't good at being a girl. At least not the kind of girl everyone thought she should be. Her clothing was crumpled, her knitting was knotted, her dancing was a disaster. And no matter how hard she tried, her heart wasn't in home ec. But there was one thing Katie was good at, baseball. Katie could catch any ball with any mitt with her eyes closed. She could hit any ball with any bat with one hand behind her back. She preferred sliding to sewing, batting to baking, home runs to homecoming. Her parents were not pleased at all. Why not piano or painting, they pleaded. What good is baseball to a girl? But Katie wouldn't be swayed. She walked baseball. She talked baseball. She even dreamed baseball. She went to the ballpark every chance she got. She loved the hot dogs and the peanuts. She loved the shouting and the singing. But most of all, she loved watching the professional players play ball. Sometimes she even imagined she was one of them. Every spring she showed up to the Fairfield High team tryouts. And every spring she was turned away without even getting to try. Better stick to ballet, the boys said. What good is baseball to a girl? But baseball was starting to change. America was at war and more and more of the country's boys, including the professional baseball players, were going off to fight. The fields were almost empty and the fans were getting frantic. Even President Roosevelt was worried. What was a country without its national pastime? No one wanted to find out. Finally, Philip Wrigley, the owner of the Chicago Cubs, had an idea. If women can work in factories and even join the army, he said, why can't they play ball? Outrageous, everyone said. Girls playing baseball? No one will pay to see girls play ball. But Mr. Wrigley didn't listen. He sent out 30 scouts to find players for his league the first and only girls professional baseball league. The scouts searched high and low, near and far, and to be perfectly frank, they were flabbergasted by what they found. All over the country, girls were playing ball. They were playing just as good as the boys. One of them was Katie Casey. Say, sister, said a scout when, she saw her cur when he saw her curveball, how'd you like to go to Chicago on trial for a real team? Would she? She didn't have to think twice. She went straight home and packed her bags, kissed her parents goodbye, and boarded the very next train. When she got to Wrigley Field, she broke into a grin. There were hundreds of girls. There were farm girls and city girls, tall girls and short girls, girls from far away and girls from down the block. But no matter what they looked like or where they came from, they all had one thing in common. They all loved baseball. Katie had never felt so at home. Sign her up, said the coach of the Kenosha Comets when they saw her swing. The All-American Girls Professional Baseball League was on its way. Everyone was curious about the strange happenings at Wrigley Field. Unheard of, said one concerned citizen. Girls don't play sports. It's certainly not ladylike, agreed another. What good is baseball to a girl, blared the headlines. The league managers heard the talk and their stomachs started to twitch. They knew their girls were ready to play ball, but maybe the country wasn't quite ready for the girls. The managers decided to launch an emergency campaign to show the country just how ladylike baseball could be. First, they designed special uniforms for the girls to wear. Dresses? asked Katie, but she shrugged and put one on. After all, at least she was getting to play ball. The managers signed the teams up to charm school. Pinkies out, girls. Posture, cried the teacher. Think swans. Finally, it was time for the big test. The girls were graceful and they were elegant. They were perfectly charming and they were ready to play ball. On opening day, 16 swan-like players emerged from each locker room and onto the field, but something wasn't right. Katie heard giggling in the stands and it grew louder and louder. Careful, you might break a nail, girls, someone shouted. Players in pigtails, roared the, roared the crowd. Is this a baseball park? or a ballroom, everyone laughed themselves silly until the All-American Girls Professional Baseball, Baseball League started to play, and they played by far the best ball any of them had ever played. 
By the bottom of the ninth, the score was Rockford Peaches 9, Kenosha Comets 6. The bases were loaded and Katie Casey was up to bat for the Comets. She stepped up to the plate and looked at the stands. She's been waiting her whole life for this. The pitcher threw the ball and Katie swung. Crack! The ball sailed up, up, up into the air and Katie took off running. It's a grand slam home run, shouted the announcer. The crowd went wild and Katie cheered right along with them because for once, no one was asking what good baseball was to a girl. They were all too busy talking about how good girls were for baseball. Uh,